The following video is produced by the Computer History Archives Project. The image of the magnetic tape reel used in large computer systems is familiar to most people. Magnetic tape storage was widely used in computers from the 1950s up through today. Actually, it wasn't until 1951 that magnetic storage tape reels were first used. The first such reels were used on the Univac 1 computer introduced in 1951. The Univac 1 was developed by the Eckert Mockley Computer Company, which later became the Univac division of Remington Rand. Their innovation was to use 8-inch reels of metal tape. The tape itself was a nickel-plated phosphor bronze, known as Vic Alloy. The tape was one half inches wide and 1,200 feet long per reel. The tapes were created in red by the Univax Uniservo tape machine. The Uniservo would transport the tape at a speed of 100 inches per second. Each reel could store 1.5 million characters, or approximately 224 kilobytes, with up to 128 characters per inch. The Uniservo had an 8-track head array, 6 tracks for data, 1 track for parity, and 1 timing channel. The data was recorded in fixed size blocks of 60 words, each with 12 characters. Up to 10 separate Uniservo tape machines could operate together on a single Univac 1 computer. Phase encoding was used to record the signal to tape, which had to be written with the tape moving forward. However, the tape itself could be read in either direction. Univac also provided a card to tape converter machine which could handle the input of 240 punched cards per minute. A single Univac tape reel could store data from 20,000 punched cards. The metal tape and reels were heavy, weighing over 4 pounds each. To secure the reels to the Uniservo, the operator put the tape on a tape lock lever and closed it securely. The lock held the spinning reel in place. Before the advent of electronic file transfer and the global Internet, data transfer from one location to another often meant shipping the tapes themselves. To transfer data to a remote location, the operator would first make sure the elastic or rubber strap was in place. Package up the tape in its box. Then place the box in a special tape mailer container. Fill out the address and packing slip and ship U.S. Postal Mail in the late 1950s, express mail for one tape reel was about $39. The Uniservo 2 machine that replaced the Uniservo 1 could read the metal tapes as well as the newer Mylar tapes that were becoming industry standard. Eventually, use of the metal tape was phased out as older Uniservo machines were replaced with newer equipment. The following video shows the Uniservo in action. From the time information contained on these magnetic tapes is transferred to the central computer to the time it is printed out in final form, the operation is fully automatic. And by means of its unique internal checking system, all information being fed into and out of the system, as well as the computation itself, is automatically checked and verified, a process which makes UNIVAC practically immune to error. Information is stored on Univax magnetic tapes, one of which is shown here being mounted on a Uniservo. These tapes are used to carry information into and out of the central computer at the tremendous peak speed of over 12,000 digits per second. Since this speed is far greater than could ever be achieved manually, the tapes are prepared ahead of time on independent devices, one of which is called the Unityper. The keyboard, as we see here, is attached to a unit that turns each keystroke into electrical impulses. These impulses form patterns of magnetic dots on Univax metallic tape. If we could see them, they would look much like this. When the tape is read on the Uniservos, 
These selectively magnetized areas represent either the character 1 or the character 0, depending upon their position. The result, a modified binary code. Binary because it consists of just two characters, 0 and 1. Now that we have our data recorded on tape, and since UNIVAC is an all-purpose computer, we can use this information to get the results we want. The only requirement now is that we tell our computer what to do. Then the change tape is run against the master employee tape and changes are recorded. Finally, the sorted base earnings tape is matched against the revised master employee tape. Running this off gives us the final net earnings for each of the 15,000 employees. And all this is done in less than four hours. And a new up-to-date master employee record, ready for use in compiling the next payroll.